society and really focusing their resources on that. So we'll talk, I'm gonna get into that in just a second. Let me see if I can start my screen now, great. All right, let me just get this up. Okay. So AACSB accreditation, I know many in the audience are not as familiar with AACSB accreditation um, and, and what we're all about. You may have know about it, but you're probably here to learn more. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that and how you can get started on the accreditation experience uh, uh, journey. Um, so what will be covered is AACSB, the connector and convener of business education, and of course, the 2020 standards. There was a lot of talk about how accreditation agencies are constantly updating themselves. Um, we spent uh, two full years looking at how we can improve the standards um, and future-proof uh, business schools um, against all the change that is happening. So the 2020 standards, I'll cover a bit on that. And look, we've had, so the 2020 standards were introduced in July 20. Uh, 20. And so we've had a full year. And what we've done in that year is we've taken, um, we said 21 schools and, and put them through a pilot of the, the 2020 standards just to see how, um, you know, how it, how it worked in, in practice. And I'm going to share some of the lessons from that. And then also look at how societal impact is woven through the standards um, and how you as the school, if you're interested, can get started on an accreditation journey. So a little bit about AACSB. We say we're the connector and convener of business education. Our mission is to foster engagement, innovation, and amplify impact in business education. And this vision, um, which again, very important to this, is transforming business education on a global scale for positive societal impact. And we do this through having the values of quality, diversity, and inclusion, global mindset, ethics, social responsibility, and community. So looking at our global landscape, um, you can see that we have almost uh, 1,700 uh, uh, educational members. And of that, we have um, 926 accredited. Now this is as of, yeah, so this is the last round of accredited schools. Um, so that's a growing percentage and where it's growing, it's growing in Asia Pacific and um, EMEA. Uh, which is the European, Middle East, and Africa sections. But one of the things I want to also point out is just how global we've come as an organization. As you can see in the Americas, where we started over 100 years ago, 45% of the membership is in the Americas. The, more than half is now outside of, out of, outside of the Americas. So we're growing internationally, and our standards also have, you know, re reflect our membership, so are increasingly more globally ap ap applicable. So in India, I'm very pleased to say we have a lot of engagement from India, um, 74 members, uh, of which 17, we have two new accredited schools, uh, MDI Gurgaon and uh, IIFT, uh, both received their accreditation this month. And so we have 17 accredited and 23 in process. And we've added, we add a few in process schools every year. Um, and, and really it's a, it's a long journey, but um, it, is, it is fruitful in the end when, when you can achieve the highest standard and quality. So what are the business accreditation standards, uh, 2020 business accreditation standards? We say a new way forward. So just to revisit why we did this, we revisited the standards and what the key goals of that were. Um, is that we felt that the standards need to be more streamlined. There's no, there's no value in doing a lot of extra work. We want to make sure that we're focused on the right things within the standards. So we, we took a look at streamlining them. Um, the principles based and outcome focus. Now this is easier said than done, but it's really something we've been focused on, especially in this last year, is helping our entire community, the volunteers, the schools, um, and everyone involved in this process really understand what we mean by principles-based and outcomes-focused standards. And I'll talk a little bit about that. We also surveyed all of our constituents to try to make sure it's a, they're globally oriented, they're applicable around the world, and they're appropriate to different parts of the world. We also focused on this idea of how do we ensure that there's agility of curriculum and faculty. So Jeff talked about that is, you know, do we have the curriculum, but also do we have the faculty that are developed to be able to deliver this curriculum in the future? 
and focus on competencies of learners of the future. So one of the things that we kind of pulled away from the 2020 standards um, this time was this more prescriptive outline of what it is uh, to be a business student and really looking at what are these competencies? What are the things that, that, that the learners of the future will need to have and will be successful if they have those competencies? And largely, we expect those to be driven um, over time through schools and what they do in their assurance of learning processes. So we also established that there's more flexibility uh, in faculty qualifications. So how are your faculty staying current to teach without flat, uh, sacrificing rigor? So we recognize that there are multiple paths that faculty will take. Um, Atul mentioned his pa faculty path, right? Um, that is something that we want to encourage and what we respect within the standards. But we can't sacrifice rigor. So how do we do that? We looked at how to do that and also looked at how faculty, you know, in faculty deployment, you only have so many resources. How can you deploy them effectively and strategically and achieve the school's mission? So we looked at, at some of that. Revisiting the standards, other uh, key goals was that we wanted to recognize the importance of lifelong learning. And in some ways, the, I mean, this is addressed throughout the standards, but in some ways it's really thinking about you know, a more holistic view of what business schools teach. We don't just teach MBAs. Right, we teach uh, a variety of learners from above that going through a variety of different pathways in 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 entry and exit pathways. Um, so really, asking schools to think about who their learners are and how they can be successful. Um, we also looked at you know looking at encouraging interdisciplinarity. So we talked about multiple disciplines um, within the business school just now. Well, that encourages innovation and we want to do more of that. So we looked at how the standards could be structured in ways that encourage um, and welcome innovation. Other things um, in related to this was had to do with how business schools build bridges um, with other schools, other schools within their university system, other schools within their uh, their uh, locality. Um, I just heard an interesting, uh, I was really excited about um, IIM Jammu, which is doing an interesting collaboration. They're setting up a new campus, but they're also collaborating with other schools, uh, national uh, schools of engineering and design to create a new program. So it's a really exciting um, uh, collaboration and something that AACSB would recognize and support. So we're also looking at and, and lastly, you know, recognize that business schools of the future can collectively make a positive impact on society. And it's all about bringing resources together so that you can utilize them to effectively for change. So the principles-based decision-making, um, again, this is uh, in the past AACSB accreditation and many accreditations looked at sort of what are the quality inputs as a proxy to whether or not a school is of high quality. But we now look at this differently and say that it is the quality outcomes, um, you know, the outcomes that a student, that a school has and, and, and what they, that's part of their story. Can they achieve outcomes and can they do it over a period of time where they're demonstrating continuous improvement? And how do they align themselves for societal impact? That is what an AACSB accredited school looks like. It is not easy, it is very difficult, but it is something that you know, schools that, that are able to focus on these key aspects will achieve accreditation. So what do we mean by principles-based and outcomes-focused? This is where it look, we look at whether or not the school is sufficiently al aligned with the spirit and intent of the standard. So, Standards are there, they're written in a certain way, they might be interpreted in a multitude of different ways, but at the end of the day, it's about making the school successful and being able to deliver what it needs to deliver to the audience it's, it serves. So that is the spirit and intent, and each standard is, is written in such a way to achieve that kind of a review. We're looking at the quality of the learning experience and outcomes that the school can, can achieve. And it's a holistic view. So it's not whether or not, you know, X number of students are not achieving learning outcomes, or it's not about, you know, how much salary, you know, whether this school earns, students earn more salary than another school, for example. It's a holistic view of the accredited unit together, and is it able to achieve what it sets out to achieve, and is it set up for that continuous improvement we talked about? That's the principles-based review. It is, it is subjective. It does rely on, in, on the professional judgment of peers. 
peers are essential to this process. So all of the reviewers of an AACSB accredited uh, accreditation review, they are all deans of accredited schools. They are all peers, they are, and we work very hard to ensure they're trained and they're appropriately aligned to the mission and vision of the school that they're reviewing. They understand the context. We spend a lot of effort on that and some of the standard uh, process improvements that we've made are around volunteer training to achieve that outcome. So the ASCSB uh, accreditation standards, we also introduced a interpretive guidance, which is a like a master white paper that runs alongside the standards, which I think will is one of the things we realize, especially as we are um, a more global organization, that having something like this and, and helping schools to interpret um, the spirit and intent of the standards was going to be important, but we also needed to be agile and able to change. So what happens every year, July 1, is we introduce updates to the interpretive guidance. As we learn from schools, we then uh, help inform them more closely on how the standards have changed and how they can, uh, and, and how they, uh, to interpret them. So these are the three components. Uh, when I said it's, we streamlined the standards, we went from 15 standards down to nine standards, and there are three buckets, essentially strategic management and innovation, uh, learner success, and thought leadership, engagement, and societal impact. The only new, uh, relatively new standard that stands on its own within this is this idea of engagement and societal impact. We heard overwhelmingly from our constituents of, that, society, that societal impact is something that accreditation bodies need to have embedded within uh, their standards and schools want and in many ways are excited. This is one of the standards they're most excited about. It is again a huge challenge for schools to be able to evaluate their societal impact but we decided as a to future-proof uh, business schools we needed them to think holistically, systematically about their communities and how they achieve that impact. So this is just to help you, and I won't go into too much detail within this, but this is a new white paper that we uh, we launched July 2021. And this is really looking at how, how AACSB is transforming business school accreditation. I encourage you to read it. Um, it talks about all of the things I've just mentioned in, in much more depth. And really, for those of you who are just getting started with the accreditation process, there's a great story, you know, history of why, how we've got to where we are in business education. And AACSB has been involved in that journey all along. So where we are today, societal impact in the 2020 standards. So societal impact um, runs through all of, uh, throughout the standards in, in, in these key areas from strategic planning on through uh, standard nine, we talk about the, each of the areas in which societal impact um, needs to be addressed by the school. So it needs to be a, a component of the mission and the strategic plan of the school. It also needs to be evident in the curriculum that the school uh, is promoting societal impact. Also, we expect that there are exemplars of societal impact in the school's research portfolio. So not every faculty member needs to be teach doing something in this area, but we expect that the school will have an idea about the areas in which it's having an impact with its research um, and on society. In standard nine, then we're looking at sort of everything that the business school is doing. So, you know, business schools have a, a, a responsibility to the students who are paying tuition and to the society who's, who um, it, it belongs to. And therefore, there needs to be actions that the school is taking. And oftentimes we find that this is very common. Schools are taking many actions, but we need it to be, there's a thread that needs to happen throughout. So that is the, that's the important piece with societal impact is that it's threaded throughout all the activities. It's strategic in nature, and it's about being able to demonstrate impact. So again, here, this is what we mean. The school demonstrates positive societal impact through internal and external activities and consistent with the school's mission strategies and expected outcomes. It's not enough to just do some of something. We expect schools to, over time, be able to identify what their societal impact aspiration is and achieve that outcome um, and, or, and set plans in place to achieve that outcome. So again, Aspirations and progress will differ. This is something that we expect. We, um, you know, AACSB's um, vision is to transform business education for societal impact. We will never 
probably achieve that goal to our satisfaction, but we will make progress along the way. So we expect the same of schools when it comes to setting up what your societal impact aspiration is. There's this emphasis on engagement with stakeholders. So again, students are a stakeholder, but they're not the only stakeholder. Learners are, as we say now, um, learners are a stakeholder, but they're not the only stakeholder. Business is a stakeholder. Um, government is a stakeholder. It depends on who, what kind of a school you are and who you're trying to, uh, to uh, work with, that you need to define these things and you need to make sure that you're engaging with them uh, over you know, in a, in a very systematic way so that you can achieve this type of societal impact that you're, you're seeking. Um, and we also say societal impact can be achieved at a local, regional, national, or international scale. It's mission specific. Um, and that's very important. The type of societal impact that the school should have is mission specific. Um, some schools are very teaching focused institutions. So of course, you know, impact on uh, student learning outcomes, uh, innovation and curriculum, um, these kinds of things will be extremely important uh, to a school uh, that has a, has a more teaching focus. Um, but, you know, there are some schools that have, that, you know, they, might focus on their research, their thought leadership in a specific domain because that's where they have expertise. So again, depends on the school, depends on the mission. But, um, and so I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we learned from the, from the pilot schools in this process. So the pilot school features, um, I said we had 21 schools, so it's not a huge sample size, but it, it's, um, it's, it's large enough. Um, we had a mix of public and private, though a, a few more public than private. Um, we had both small and large school, medium and large schools. And um, one of the things we measured within this is disciplines, because one of the, uh, one of the changes in the 2020 standards that is going to allow us the flexibility in the faculty, as I was talking about, is this move to reporting by discipline. So schools had to identify the disciplines that underpin their programs. And so just to give you a feel for what we saw in the, the pilot uh, schools that were included, um, these are the main disciplines that, that we see underpinning, and it shouldn't be of any surprise to any of you, finance, accounting, management, marketing, economics, business law. Um, these are the, the main uh, uh, disciplines which we saw. Where we saw probably the widest variety within disciplines, because we're talking about technology, is a lot of these emerging disciplines that are adjacent related uh, to technology. So, and so nobody has a real kind of clear idea of, you know, how to define this discipline at the moment. So we're seeing a lot more variety here with information systems, information technology and operations management, manage, uh, management information systems, um, uh, looking at quantitative methods, there's analytics, data science, um, there's a variety here. I think we'll see some convergence on kind of what these all come into, but it's just a, it, it's an indicator that technology and, and the disciplines that support different types of technology, uh, you know, integrated programs um, are, is, is rapidly changing and we're not at a, at a clear um, base on that yet, but more to come. So what worked well from the standard, uh, the 2020 standards pilot? Well, schools appreciated the principles-based and, and outcomes-focused review. Um, this is because the view is consultative, right? There's a consultative emphasis, and that's what they believe creates value. Um, it's that ability to learn from your peers in the process. And there was also this greater emphasis of strategic planning. Now, I know somebody mentioned that some businesses are doing away with strategic strategic planning. What ASCSB has done with strategic planning is actually put more emphasis on it. We don't say it's 10 years or five years. We say that you, ha you have to have a strategic plan that helps guide decision, uh, uh, decision making at the school. And this emphasis on strategic planning really is, um, you know, we expect to see innovation in this area. We expect to see schools. We actually have a seminar on agile strategic planning um, because it, we understand that there is a role, if you're going to have change management, if you're going to be bringing everyone on board, there's an emphasis on strategic planning, making sure you're all headed in the same direction. Um, and one of the other things, you know, on that is that we saw that there were really important discussions around thought leadership strategy. You know, research is something that schools, you know, and, and it, you know, the, the, the comment that I hear is, should students be paying for business school research, right? Should, should tuition go towards business school research? Well, we think that that, yes, we think that, that um, 
thought leadership, focused, intelligent design strategy around thought leadership is extremely important, but how a school does it um, is, is up to them. And it's a, it's a challenge for every school. Um, so that's one of the things that we saw from the standards uh, reviews. So what were some, uh, what were some of the, the key challenges that schools faced? And this gets back to societal impact. It's a brand new standard, so we'd expect to see this. But schools really struggled to, to effectively tell their impact story from a strategic point of view versus an ad hoc manner. Um, and that's what you would expect with a pilot where it's a brand new standard. But that's an important uh, takeaway that schools can, can really um, uh, effectively uh, um, look at it and say, okay, are we doing this strategically? Uh, providing, again, that more focused impact on societal impact and, um, you know, strategic planning is, is there and, and how you do that. There's a need to be more specific in our strategic plans, KPIs, targets, etc. So I don't want to take up more time on this. Just to kind of give you an update from the July 1 uh, interpretive guidance, we've introduced our standards and interpretive guidance. We've introduced a new table around societal impact. And this is a way for your schools. It's just an optional table. It's a way for schools to report out on societal impact. And we've developed, we've used the, the, the SDGs as a, um, you know, probably the most global and well understood set of, of areas of societal impact. And it really does cover everywhere. Not every school, ha you don't have to use this, um, but we see that many schools appreciate this. And just to take a quick look through what a, a sample of this would look like, if your uh, societal impact aspiration is on having no poverty, right? Um, we would expect that you've chosen to, uh, re you know, you, you've identified it in your, in your uh, strategic plan. Um, you identified areas in which where the, in the curriculum, the school is making an impact in this area. You would identify also in scholarship, how the school is progressing this idea. And then again, in its other activities. So that's just the, the sort of model. So it's focus area, strategically chosen, activity, output, outcomes, impact, and transformation. So I don't want to take up way too much time here, but getting started with AACSB accreditation. Um, I'm going to leave these. This is as simple as one, two, three. If you're interested in accreditation and you're not a member, become a member of AACSB and then get in touch with an accreditation manager to help you understand your timeline, how to prepare for the initial journey. And then also, please, if you become a member of AACSB, one of the things is, is you should really use the network to connect with peer schools. That engagement connecting with peer schools, we do see as a major success factor. Um, all of you here today engaging with peer schools is, is part of that. So um, this is an important success factor of, of AACSB accreditation. And just to keep it, I'll leave this slide in here so you have this. Uh, on the accreditation timeline of what we expect schools to go through and, and how those, those phases of the standards work. Um, and you're working with a mentor, you're working with a staff liaison throughout that process. So it's really well guided. Um, you know where you are, it's transparent. You know where you are at every stage of the process. Um, and then just to give you an idea where you can learn more, AACSB events, we have quality assurance events, professional development, global trends, and just a few. And excitingly, a lot of these are still virtual. Um, I know everybody's Zoom fatigued, but for those of us in different parts of the world that can't travel to some of these international locations, this has been uh, really helpful for me. Um, and, and I hope that you'll take advantage of them still being virtual as well. And then these are our virtual seminars. So that's it. I'll leave it up for questions or Totachi, you can tell me what the our time frame is. Uh, thank you very much. It was an excellent